This is the best laser and this is the worst laser according to you, at least the 300 folks that filled out the survey. So in this video, we're gonna get into what those lasers are, the features that you like and you don't like about them, as well as a bunch of other answers from the survey, including how many of you are actually making money with your laser. And spoiler, there's actually a few of you making over half a million a year. All right, let's jump into it. So the idea for this video, as well as the survey, was because I actually got called out on a video a few weeks back and pretty much all of the reviews of the lasers I do on this channel, I don't actually pay for. So I get that can make it a little complicated. And even though I do my best to be as unbiased as possible, uh, I totally get that that's probably impossible when I get something sent my way. What I wanna do is start incorporating what you guys think of those lasers in these videos. So I sent out that survey to see what you liked as well as what you didn't. And it kind of grew from there to not only about the machines themselves, but also the types of things that you guys like to make, the software that you like to use, even where you find designs. And there's definitely a few things that surprised me, starting with this. So I'm actually gonna pull up the results from the survey right here. So in general, about 300 of you guys took this survey. And the first one I wanted to see is if you actually had a laser. And this surprised me because there is about 7% of the people that took this survey don't currently own a laser. So thanks for watching, even if you don't own one. Uh, and hopefully you'll pick out the one that you guys like the most in the future. And then I asked why those folks don't currently use a laser. Uh, and these were open response. And I got several talking about a very particular brand. This is Otour. Uh, uh, the, basically folks saying that things were going wrong, wasn't able to get stuff fixed. Uh, and this was my favorite. I absolutely do not recommend Otour. But later you're gonna see how many people actually do recommend this to their friends. But in general, you could probably guess the common theme. And for the most part, it was like, I just can't afford one, or I don't have enough space or the type of projects that I need to use it. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the background of folks that do currently use a laser. Now, lots of you guys own multiple machines, so you're able to select multiple brands, but you can probably guess what's going to be number one, especially if you're getting served ads on YouTube, and that is Xtool in terms of the most popular brand for the machines that people use. And one thing I do wanna say about use, I didn't say buy at this point because I wanted to leave it open to cases where folks might be using it in a makerspace or an educational setting. Um, so this is just folks that have access to a laser, what's the type of laser that they use. So you can see the breakdown right here, Xtool has 17%. Otor, even though there are folks that don't like it, still a lot of you do, especially because they were kind of one of the really first ones in the budget diode category. That's actually like one of my very first laser reviews. They're at 13%. Uh, and then we've got Atom Stack at 10%, Ohm Tech at 9%, and then Full Spectrum Laser at 3%. And the next up, I wanted to know like where you're using your laser. And I found that 62 2% of you are using it inside of your house, whether that's in your garage or a craft room. And then 38% of you are using it outside of your home. Specifically, we've got about 20% of folks that actually have their own dedicated shop. This was surprising, Makerspace. That was only 3%, so there's only nine folks of everyone that responded is using a laser inside of a Makerspace. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking that was gonna be a lot bigger, uh, but it just wasn't. Now let's talk about how good you are with lasers, starting with the experience in terms of years. Now, now, 50% of you are in the two to five year range with about 12% more than that and then the rest underneath. So pretty good bell curve in terms of no experience all the way to 10 plus years experience. Now experience doesn't always translate to skill. So that was something I asked as well. So I wanted you to rate your laser ability and pretty much the majority of you answered, I can either do the basics or I have a pretty good idea how lasers work uh, with about 9% on the very advanced side of things. And then 11% on the total beginner side of things. Now this survey actually filtered out all the folks that don't currently have a laser. Um, so these are people that have access to a laser, but still they're saying they're a total beginner. Now lasers are really only one aspect uh, to creating something like this. If you guys saw my previous video, then you saw me using a special piece of software to create this map design. Um, it's pretty cool, I encourage you to check it out. But being able to create designs and how you create designs was a big piece that I wanted to know. So first I wanted to know, do you create your own designs? And 88% of you guys said yes. And then I wanted to know in what software you're using to do that. Now, this was actually pretty surprising and something I feel like that has changed over the years. Almost half, so 44% of you said you actually create your designs inside of the software itself. With Inkscape, the free vector editing software, 32%. And then you've got like Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, even Photoshop and Canva showing up as well. But I was actually pretty surprised that the laser software is also where you're doing your design work. You're not just importing it directly in. And speaking of that laser software, uh, this was probably not as surprising. 
the number one piece of laser software, according to you, in terms of what you actually use, is Lightburn, coming in at 85 and then basically all the other software that people listed is going to be machine specific. So Xtool Creative Space is gonna come in at 19%. So even though it was the most popular brand of laser, there's a lot of lasers that can use Lightburn, including some Xtool stuff, and you guys use it. Now, even though 80% of you are creating your own designs, I also wanted to see if you're going out there and using resources to pull in designs as well. So I asked, where do you find designs? And there are a lot of different resources you mentioned. This was open-ended and I actually put together a list of all the different resources that you mentioned. You can find a link for that down below. I've talked about this in the past. This is a resource that I've had on my end and I've updated with those resources from you as well. But for the most part, pretty much the two most popular answers were either you just straight Google it or number two was Etsy. So a lot of you guys seem to be going out to Etsy and downloading designs and pulling them in as well. And in fact, I'd love to know from you where you are finding your designs. Leave a comment down below because I always want to be updating that list and giving you guys as many resources as possible, specifically ones that you're not having to pay for. So you've got your laser and your design software. What are the actual things that you guys are designing? Again, this was an open-ended question that I asked, but the types of products or things that you guys are making with the lasers kind of fall into about eight different categories, going in order of how often I saw them. And some of these can kind of bleed into different places. First is gonna be crafting and DIY. Um, this is gonna be like smaller things like keychains or Christmas ornaments or laser cut puzzles. Um, there are a lot of those type things that could fit into that category. Next is going to be just engraving a specific item. Um, these are usually like one-off stuff. There's a lot of people saying that like I engrave specific acrylic things or wooden things or metal things. You have a fiber laser. So that was number two. And the number three was a sign or a label. And this is like a sign or a label in a business context. And I know especially for the businesses, this is something that came up over and over again for people making money. Then we've got jewelry and accessories. And then we've got house decor and household items. So this could be everything from like wall art and decorative signs to custom coasters. And then next up, we have educational items. So specific things people are making for uh, like classrooms that came up a lot. So like toys, but toys you could use to educate. And then last but not least, we've got business or promotional items. These can be more things like awards or badges or stuff like that. And speaking of making money, let's talk about how many of you are making money with your lasers. And so what I found is the majority of you actually aren't. So 60% said you are using this just as a hobby with 30% saying it's a side income, 9% saying it's a full-time business, and then 2% of you are saying you're using it within a company. But then I asked that 40% some specific business questions that started with how many employees you currently have. Uh, you can probably guess that the majority of you said it's just me with about 80% of you and the number two option was like two to three at 17%. But then I ask the money question. So what is the yearly income that you make with your business? Now I didn't say specific to the laser itself and you'll see why here in a second. So just like within the business, whether it's a side income, full time, blah, blah, blah. And so the majority are like a dollar to a thousand bucks. So very much a side income at 31%. About 20% of you are in the a thousand to $5,000 a year. 16 is 5,000 to 10,000. Then 24% of you are making between 10 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. And then 2% were making over 500. Now again, this was a small sample size. So 2% literally means two people, but they definitely are out there. So I asked people to actually give me like websites to their businesses so I could check them out. But I also said I wouldn't make that public. But I can say that as you get like higher up the income level, the more like full sign shop you get into. In fact, there's like two businesses in the half a million and up range are like full sign shop. So they're using lasers as like one element to be able to customize stuff. And then a lot of them are doing like big corporate jobs. And then kind of as you're stepping down, folks are still selling a lot of different items that they're custom branding. But a laser is just a tool in their bigger arsenal of like printing and all that kind of stuff. Stuff that they're shipping out. Finally, let's talk about your favorite and least favorite lasers. Now, one thing I had to do is I had to make this a brand just because I didn't have enough responses for individual lasers to be able to give you like any real rankings in terms of lasers themselves. Maybe that's something I can do in the future. And then any brand that didn't get at least five responses, I pretty much like took it out of the survey. And then once I filtered all of those other brands out, I asked how satisfied are you with your machine on a scale of one to 10. And I want to give you the top five, starting with number five. Coming in with a score of 8.1 out of 10 is 
OMTEC. And a lot of you mentioned OMTEC Polar, which I've done several videos on in the past, and even some of their bigger machines. And then coming in at number four with a score of 8.2 is my favorite diode laser from last year, and that is the Lasermatic from Raleigh. And there's actually 16 of you that have it and rated it. And then coming in at number three with a rating of 8.5, we've got Thunder Laser. And a lot of you mentioned the Thunderbolt, and that's actually my favorite currently. A really, really nice machine. Thunder's a great company. They do a great job. Then coming in at number two with a score of 8.6. Uh, this was the most maybe surprising to me because this is not a traditional laser brand. Um, you're gonna be a lot more familiar with them, with the machines behind me. This is actually Creality, which is normally a 3D printing brand, but with their Falcon 2, especially their fully, do I have it in here? No, I don't have it in here, but I'll show you B-roll. Their fully enclosed machine is a very, very nice machine. And they've actually even upgraded the wattage to I believe 60 watts. I've got that and I'm doing a review on it currently. So they've been knocking it out of the park. Now there's only five of you that have that machine, but of those that have it, you really seem to like it. And then drum roll, please. The number one rated laser brand with a score of 9.0 out of 10 is Aeon Laser. Now, big caveat, this was only from six folks that have the machine, but I could totally see this happening because Aeon has a really, really good brand online. A lot of people seem to love their machines. I don't have any hands-on experience with their machines, but according to six of you that took the survey, you do, and you really like it. And then I asked how likely you were to recommend this machine to a friend. The only difference was that Raleigh and Thunder just switched spots. Aeon was still number one, but it was at a 9.3 out of 10, so even higher. Now let's talk about the lasers that you guys do not like. So I'm gonna give you the top five. So going from like least worst to worst. So number one is going to be the worst brand. They got five or more reviews. Number five, this was the one that people were hating on at the beginning of the survey, and that is Otour. And they've got a rating of 7.5 out of 10. And then the fourth worst is going to be Sculpt Fun. I've done reviews on Sculpt Fun in the past, but I do kind of get the placement here. It's just like your average diode machine that's pretty similar to most of the other machines out there. Now the third worst was actually pretty popular. And um, this is Adam. Stack. Adam Stack has a massive line of machines. I've done several reviews on the past and you guys rated it a 7.1. Now the runner up to the worst laser brand, according to you with a rating of 6.4 is Glowforge. I probably could have seen this coming. The fact that the system is like fully locked down, you have to use the internet. They came out of the gates really hot. There wasn't much like them when they first started, but on the machine itself, we haven't really seen many, if any, improvements. They do have new machines on the lower end of the market, but the actual Glowforge CO2 machine, we haven't seen many updates, and you guys seem to reflect that. And then the worst laser brand, according to you, and this actually was pretty surprising. I would not have expected this one. This was was weak or the G machine that I like to call it. Now this was only five reviews and my personal experience with these machines, they do a good job. I think the company itself is pretty comparable to Ohmtech, if not a little bit nicer, but for whatever reason, you guys do not seem to have a great experience. Now you probably noticed there's like one key brand that is not showing up and that is the most popular brand according to you and that is X Tool. So let me give you like the full list. There's actually 13 brands that received five or more ratings and X Tool came right in the middle at number seven. So it received the most ratings at 59 and had a score of 7.7 .7 in terms of overall satisfaction as well as 7.7 .7 in terms of recommendation. Here is the top list one through 13 on satisfaction as well as recommendation. Now the last part of the survey asks what do you like and what do you dislike about the machines that you have after rating them. This was open-ended and there are a lot of responses, but I did my best to kind of categorize them into what, 10 different categories. So in terms of what people liked the most, number one had to do with speed. And I could totally see this with how especially diode machines are marketed. Usually you'll see something like 24,000 millimeters per minute blazing across the website. CO2 as well, you'll see like 900 millimeters per second. Um, even like one of my most recent videos was five times faster. Number two was ease of use. And this was actually really cool to see because that's really not gonna be on the marketing. That's just gonna be once you use the machine, the fact that it's easy to use, is gonna be helpful. And then number three is going to be power. So how much wattage does that diode or CO2 or fiber machine have? And then on the disc-like side of things, number one is actually going to be 
power. So a lot of you said that like this machine is good, but I just wish I had more power because I want to cut through more stuff or I actually want to use the speed that I like about it. But I find when I actually run it at the top speed that it does a good job advertising. I can't really use it because the power is pretty limiting. The number two is going to be size. And this kind of broke into like the size of the actual machine, but a lot of it was the size of the work bed because a lot of folks had a powerful machine, fast machine, but they just wanted to do stuff that was bigger than the machine itself. But speed did still show up and that was number three. Folks found it slow. And this was especially true on the cutting side. Um, so that's not where you're gonna hit your max speed. That's just gonna be for engraving, but speed and power are pretty linked. And in fact, here is the top 10 for both of those lists if you wanna check it out. Now, like I mentioned before, those likes and dislikes were actually open-ended questions and I can split them up by brand. Now I am gonna use some of those reviews in the future, but I've actually put all of them together in a document if you kinda of wanna see what people like and don't like about specific brands. There is a link down below for you guys to check it out. So I would love to know what you think about these rankings. Did we all get it right? Let us know in the comments. Also this survey link, I'm gonna keep live. My plan is to do like an update on this on a pretty regular basis. So if you didn't get your opinion in and you want to have it for the future, there's a link down there as well. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.